Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. We're, of course, going straight into uh, the major news headlines this morning uh, across the country. And we're starting this morning with the Punch newspapers just before we introduce our guests. The big one there, of course, uh, says, uh, start with governors, political office holders, Labor tells National Assembly, and that is on the differential wage bill. Start with governors and political office holders, Labor tells National Assembly. El Rufai, other governors behind wage bill, Labor alleges. Speaker defends sponsor, ask uh, workers to articulate grievances. Also on the punch, federal government recorded 1.48 trillion naira fiscal deficit in the fourth quarter, says CBN. Bankers must submit asset form from June, says uh, the EFCC. And Nigeria's inflation rises again, hits a four-year high in February. 50 suspects arrested for robbery, kidnapping, uh, firearms recovered. And we can also see on the Pontius morning, uh, police intensify patrols as two are killed in fresh Quara court clash. U.S. mission contacts immigrant visa applicants affected by Trump's uh, restrictions. That should be good news for some people. Uh, we also can see uh, uh, here family sues Ogun traditionalist over monarch's corpse demands 50 billion naira. Uh, CBN and NCC fix USSD banking transactions at 6, uh, 6 naira 98 cover. That's also on the Punch newspapers this morning. Let's turn to the nation now. The banner story, EFCC to bankers, assets declaration now a must. Role of financial institutions in crime, worrisome, an agency to battle cyber criminals. Experts foresee likely unrest as inflation hits 17.33%. NCAA suspends Asmane operations. Strange disease kills three, infects 284 in Kano. Full deregulation of petrol price coming, says federal government. At 95, I can no longer lead a Feni Ferry, says Fasharanti. Wakilin and two sons remanded in prison. Inspector General can remain in office till 2024, Buhari Malami tell court. NDDC says, we gave governors 100 million naira each for COVID-19. EU tackles Nigeria over ban on dairy products. Those are the stories on the front page of the Nation newspaper. All right, and of course, uh, now to the Nigerian Tribune this morning. Uh, federal government states FCT owed 32.915 trillion naira as of December 2020. That's from the Debt Management Office. EFCC to demand bankers' asset declaration forms from June 1st. And also WTO to mediate as EU complains about Nigeria. Again, FIRS claims authority over stamp duties collection and bank customers to pay 6.98 uh, naira, or 6 naira 98 cover per USSD transaction. Nigeria's inflation rate hits 17.33%, the highest in four years. Prices of food items highest in Kogi, Ondo, and Ebony states. And also five kidnapped on Ijebo de Badon Road. Also on the Nigerian Tribune, family sues traditionalists for hijacking monarch's corpse in, uh, in Ogun state. Wakili and two sons docked, remanded in prison. Also this morning, three dead as over 280 people get sick in Kano state. And also Adebanjo emerges, uh, acting as any fair leader as Fasharanti steps down. Uh, I think these are the big ones that we will share this morning. Of course, the NBS report exposes APC's lies about employment and job creation, says the PDP. That's also on the Nigerian Tribune this morning. I think one of the biggest stories that we've seen on this newspapers uh, this morning is about Nigeria's inflation rates. We just talked about exiting recession and we discussed here with experts about the economic indices that were driving that growth, right? And we talked about telecommunications, for example. Experts say they predict that we would slump back into a recession if things were not properly handled. And we're now we're seeing inflation rates, we're seeing inflation, food prices skyrocketing, bread, cereals, yam, tubers, and all of that 
getting so expensive. Inflation rates here hitting 17.33 trillion naira in four years. Food prices highest in Kogi, Ondo, and Eboni. And really, we, we can all tie this back to the issue of security, like you earlier mentioned, because what really is agriculture without security? We seem to con con continually deal with the farmers' headers clashes. And when people are not you know, comfortable or confident enough to go to their farms, they feel insecure, you begin to have issues like this. Remember the blockade we had from the north to the south? That also affected food security. We saw food scarcity in the markets at that point. We saw inflation. We saw, you know... These things tie together. Security, agriculture, you can't separate them from each other. And we know that the you know, International Monetary Fund, IMF, had said in February that Nigeria would need to uh, tighten policy if inflation gets out of control. And we do need to see the federal government, the CBN, act very fast to reverse this ugly trend that we're seeing in the economy. There is, okay, so I'll first of all, start with the, you know, exit and recession, you know, point that you mentioned, you know, the, the, the analysts, you know, would also say that, you know, the margin with which we even exit a recession wasn't anything to really celebrate. It was, you know, a really tiny margin. Mm -hmm. um, but with regards to the um, um, inflation, um, it has continued to rise in the last couple of years. If you look at the figures from 2015 all the way, you know, till 2021, it has continued to rise. Um, and, you know, it, it makes you wonder what exactly uh, Nigeria's economic management team really is doing, you know, what exactly, you know, our, our ministries are doing um, to ensure that we somehow, some way survive all of this. Um, when you talk about a 17.33% inflation, uh, the, the Nigerian on the street doesn't know what that figure means, doesn't really care what that figure means. But, you know, for him... He is buying food stuff. He is transporting himself. He's paying for health care. He is, you know, paying for water and, you know, different bills here and there. And, and it hits them, I mean, even harder, um, um, you know, when they have to make, pay these bills and, of course, live in, you know, in, in this environment where um, prices of, of goods and all of that are entirely high. Um, and so it's, it's, it's tough for Nigerians. The question, you know, a lot of people would ask is... Do, Seeing how it has progressed, seeing how, you know, these figures have continued to rise, what needs to be done? At what point, you know, do we expect that the government's uh, steps, you know, that have been taken will help us reduce the level of inflation we're dealing with? Good morning to um, Demola Kingbola, the publisher of the Podium Media. Thank you for joining us. Yes, good morning. All right. Still uh, can't uh, connect with him. Is um, having uh, audio connections, uh, audio connection issues this morning. But anyway, right. um, you know, so so it's 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 questions that need to be asked. Um, yes. You know, who exactly should be held responsible if we continue to? What if you know next year you know we start to see inflation figures reaching up to twenty percent? What next at that time? Another big issue also, you know, tying close to the economy is the Central Bank of Nigeria. They've introduced new charges for ussd service so usually you know every bank seem to have this ussd code uh i don't want to mention some banks but it's usually three digit number star three digit number yes. hash and you can make money transfers you can buy airtime and all of that you know great very convenient for people you don't need to go to the bank anymore you know we've involved beyond all that but people are really wondering where this is coming from you will now have to pay six naira and 98 cover per ussd transaction meaning that the transaction I made from one of my banks to the other yesterday would not be free anymore. Is it even free? I think there's a charge, but I, I, I have no idea if there was a charge about on that. But now the banks would be charging you at least six naira for that. Lots of Nigerians are not happy about this. There's a, uh, a 10 naira per transaction that they used to pay that I'm aware of now, but... Uh, I have no idea where, where economic analysts, you know, stand on this matter. What, what is the potential for uh, how it's going to affect, you know, customers in Nigeria? We saw yesterday uh, one of the House of Rep members uh, condemning this, saying it will lead to overcrowding in banks and uh, to lead to, I, I have no idea where he was coming from, but that's what he mentioned, that people might not want to, you know, might abandon this and that you might be causing a retrogression rather than us progressing into, you know, uh, mobile money operations, digital economy and all of that, that we might now have to see a situation where everybody's now going back to the banks because I, don't, I think they don't yeah. charge you for that over the counter, do they? Well, so I, I have no idea where the CBN is coming from 
with its new directive, but it is what it is. It will still naira, cost. It will still cost you more to go to the bank. You know, transportation. You know that you pay price. definitely more than six or seven naira. <laughs> you, know. you know, petrol price also that you, you know you would spend going to the bank. It will still cost you more. Um, I, I've never had, and I think a, a lot of Nigerians really don't have issues paying. You know, little taxes here and there. Um, it just has to be entirely justified. But it up. That's, um, yes, you know, that's but really I, it, it needs to be justified. And, and when people say, oh, Nigerians don't pay their taxes, you know, people would argue that it's because, you know, a lot of Nigerians don't see the benefits, you know, of paying these taxes. And so, you know, they, as Nigerians, will always try to beat the system. I feel the CBN needs to do more to explain to Nigerians why it is, you know, left for, um, uh, yeah. for customers to pay this, you know, almost seven naira charge. Um, it, it probably was the banks who were paying, you know, these charges before. Now they're moving to the customers. And I saw someone say yesterday, uh, why rob Peter to pay Paul when you can rob Peter, Paul, and their friend Pius <laughs> um, in reaction to this? So, um, right. you know, there, there needs to be better communication from the CBN as to why, you know, this, you know, is necessary. And um, who you really is going to be getting this six naira? Is it the CBN? Exactly. Is it the banks? No, I, think, the I think they're saying it's uh, the banks would be collecting the money. But, but really, it makes you ask questions like the government keeps talking about, you know, cashless policy. You want everybody to be able to do online transactions and with your phone, not, not, not needing to carry so much cash. I don't know if this is progressing that, that, that narrative or not. You know. yeah, and, you know, the, the importance of USSD also, um, it has made a lot of transactions a lot, a lot easier. Yes. A lot of times bank apps uh, fail, their mobile apps also fail, and so mm -hmm. you have to resort to USSD, and most times it actually does work. And so um, until we get better clarification or a better, you know, narrative as to why this is, you know, I would just say, you know, I don't think Nigerians have issues paying these little, you know, funds here and there. Speak for yourself. But it needs to be, <laughs> no, I'm just saying it needs to be justified. You know, you need to be able to tell Nigerians, this is what, you know, you re really are benefiting from this. This is going to be an entirely seamless process, you know. And maybe you can say, okay, six naira is too much. Let's give, let's make it three naira for every, every transaction. Mm. Um, and you are um, assured 100% that you would always have seamless transactions, you know, via USSD. Um, there's, there's all of that, you know, and then there's also something you mentioned on the nation about the NDDC, uh, NDDC uh, giving a hundred million naira to uh, governors for uh, COVID-19. Interesting, you know, and so once again, what did these funds go into? Did they go into, you know, getting palliatives, you know, for, for um, citizens of, or, you know, residents of those uh, states? Mm -hmm. Did they go into subsidizing health care for people who were in the hospitals battling COVID-19? Did they go into subsidizing the prices of oxygen, you know, for people who needed them in, in the hospitals? What exactly did these funds go into? I would always say that we, ne we, we do very, very poorly um, as a country with regards auditing. The only audits, you know, auditing that really goes on, you know, in Nigeria and goes on well is in private firms, in, in mm -hmm. those very big offices that you want to earn a million a month. The auditing there is, is almost, you know, perfect. But for government, state government, local governments, you know, the federal government, our level of auditing is so poor mm -hmm. that, you know, nobody really is going to question what the hundred million naira went into from the NDDC. The state governor also doesn't feel like he owes you any explanation as to what, um, you know, okay. he did with, you know, 100 million naira that he got from the NDDC. And how much better would Nigerian lives be if those funds were put into good use? All right. Let's uh, turn to a couple of stories on the Daily Sun. And uh, I think the big one here says, my government capable of halting banditry and insurgency. And that's a statement from President Muhammadu Buhari. I agree. I, I agree. You agree? Okay. So we're <laughs> capable, but so why why are we not then? Yes, I mean, if if, if, if is it is it factual that we are capable or we should be capable? Yes. Um, you know, the question is why aren't we you know achieving positive results? You know, are with regards to fighting. Why against, aren't uh, we pulling our weight? Yeah, exactly. Because you can't. You know, when when we speak with analysts on the, on the program, when you listen to people. Um, you know, say their, their piece with regards to how we're dealing with kidnappings and the rest of them. Mm -hmm. You can tell that there is so many, many, you know, ways that we are failing. And it's not because we don't have the, the finances or we don't have the training or we don't have the skills or we don't have the military experience, you know, that should be able to um, sort these things out. But there is definitely something that is making it, you know, harder. Um, there is no questions asked as to why... 300 people can be kidnapped and driven kilometers into a forest in a country that has this many checkpoints across, mm. that has this many, you know, um, um, police officers. Maybe, you know, not enough. 
But it makes no sense, you know, why that is possible. It makes no sense why kidnappers would take 300 people and then two weeks later release them. There have to be questions asked. Yes, and that's why we're asking the questions on platforms like The Breakfast. Uh, let's now take a break and uh, we'll return with Today in History. <laughs>